Team Commitment Week is Team Competition Weeks on steroids. Everything's just centered around compete, compete, compete. And like that's a culture that we love to have here. I could see it throughout the locker room. There's a competition every day, competition every morning, several competitions throughout the course of the day. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a way to get guys kind of really, we were competing now, but it's really a way to amp up the competition going into spring ball. First up, on this side, I got Team Hartzog. On this side, I got Team Johnson. Team Hartzog, Team Johnson. I'm here, and I'm all in, and Julie's all in, and I've loved the people that I've met, and we're not going anywhere unless you guys kick us out. And so I just want to make sure that, that, that I spend my time talking about everything that is right, and the last part of that is our team. And this team has come so far in these eight weeks. I mean, the problems that existed last year aren't the problems now. And the team's adjusting to me because I'm becoming a different Coach Rule and we're getting a different Tony White now because we're gonna give our players the gift of high expectations. We snuck up maybe on people sometimes this year, like, ah, oh, the Huskers, well, they're gonna be ready for us next year. They're gonna be ready for the 3-3-5. Three, three, they're gonna be ready for, you know, the players that we have. And so we are pushing them and driving them. And what I love is, they're accepting it and they're sprinting and they're running and they're working and this is going to be an unbelievably competitive spring ball. I'm really, really proud of them and I don't tell them that very often. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm not a fuzzy, feely type of a coach, so it's important that they hear it. I'm, I'm proud of them. How we practice, the habits we establish, standards that we have will determine what happens to us in the fall. What happens to you personally, all you guys that are nervous about where you're going to end up, all you can control are your habits and your standards. So standards I want to see today. Number one, we always protect our teammates. Everybody here is dreaming of playing, so we're going to protect each other at all times. Good. Fine. Bicep. Let's fumble to shield. Rip case. Good. We're going to protect the ball at all times. Defense, how do you help us protect the ball? You try to take it away. We are fighting a war for the football every time we're out here. Good. Good. Play with Link. Play with Link. Catch it in front of your eyes. We didn't like it when we fumbled the ball last year, did we? So we are all going to have a commitment to hold the football the right way. Outside, 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 outside. Good. 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 When I want finish, we're talking about Matt Drill finish. Not cool guy finish. Not celebration before the play is over finish. We're talking about Matt Drill finish, and I want to see it on defense every single day that we practice. The important thing is we're going to compete. We're going to compete. You want, you want to start, compete for it. You want to play, compete for it. You want to freaking make a play, compete for it. Compete in every single thing. Compete in Indy. Perfect arm violence. Perfect club rip and finish. Compete in one on one. Rip. Count. So if we ain't compete, get the count. I don't want you to rip. Come on. Compete against the guy you're trying to beat out. Compete against the defense. And most importantly, compete against yourself. Competition is good. Protect the teammates. Protect the ball. Match drill finish. Compete in every single drill. You want to say thank you? Sir. Sure. Sit. Nice to meet you, bro. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Sit though. Sit down. Sit down.
to take to that school over there. It's like a big field down there. Go and play and stuff like that. If not, I'll keep him out here. Do a little running around. He likes to run away though. I gotta chase him around the whole neighborhood and stuff like that. And that's like not a fun time. So yeah, that's my little man. Get him a nurse sometimes, but you know. I got him last May. Last May, she's like almost a year now. So I knew eventually I was going to like live with myself and like always wanted one, but I just didn't have like, like enough time. In fact, like, last year was like a good time for me to get a dog. I just play had like a little bit of time. I played with like my prior years and stuff. Yeah. I was going to try my truck. I said, my favorite bit of dog. Get it out of Husky. And then I find, and I find somebody out here that breaks German Shepherds and got this cat. <laughs> This I'm Romero Johnson, graduate senior, I guess to be uh, specific, six year in the program. Um, I'm from Harlem, New York City. I play running back for the Huskers. I used to say growing up, like, you got your parents and then you got the city itself. It could be rough at times, but you gotta find a way to maneuver. You know, it was tough, but at times it was fun. You know, finding football really got me into getting on a focused path, a narrow path, I would say. I didn't start playing football seriously until I was like 10 years old, and ever since then, I just fell in love with the sport. It was a way to just, you know, escape some problems I had growing up. You know, nobody's perfect. Everybody got their own little, you know, situations. And me playing football, I was able to just, you know, really just uh, be myself. So that's kind of how it started for me. And then from there, I always had aspirations going to my high school, Bergen Catholic in Jersey. Bergen's in New Jersey. Uh, Harlem to Bergen, it was like a, uh, like a two hour trip. I wake up like 4.30 in the morning, take two trains actually, get to the George Washington Bridge, which is the bridge that goes from New York to Jersey. And I catch the school bus there and they take me to school. You know, for me, like growing up, like we was always told, like people from um, New York City, like, oh, New York City don't got football athletes. And I guess for me, it's just like, I wanted to show like uh, people that look up to me from Harlem, like, you know, we can do this thing. Like you can look like me, be like me, come from the same situation as me and still be successful and get to where you want to get to and have your aspirations be uh, accomplished, I would say. Quarterback should go somewhere where they, they, they are taught how to play quarterback from the ground up. And that's what I like about Glenn. The way he teaches the quarterbacks, they could be in the air raid, they could be in the run and shoot, they could be in a pro style offense. He's still gonna teach them and he's gonna he's gonna scaffold that teaching, keep kind of you know taking them to that next proximal state where they're learning just what they need to learn. I've been in division two ball and I've been in the NFL probably half my career. So I've kind of seen both ends of the highest level of quarterback coach and then coaching an eighteen year old freshman. Your target's the chops. Go, go, go. Better target. Every time. Punch and get it out. Good. Ball, he's out. Ball. We're going to set over here, right? It'll be an overfray. I think you got to find that line of where are they at and try to meet them at that line and then raise the ceiling from there. Good, good, good. Still keep that safety where? Keep, keep the safety in the middle. So you have to be aware of what their strength is. If they're a passer, are they elite accuracy? If they're an athlete, do they have enough passing ability to get you through a passing situation? So I think you have to identify what they're really good at good. and then is that trait good enough to carry them through? Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Hey, put it on the left hat. Aim small, miss small, get it to that front shoulder. Heinrich needs reps to be the starting quarterback in the league. Sure. Danny Kalen needs reps to be the starting quarterback in the league for us. Dylan needs reps to be the starting quarterback in the league for us. And they all deserve the right to go through that process. So kind of going all in on these guys. You know, that's probably the one thing that I've been most proud of in my career as far as anybody that's on the field, the expectation and the standards to play. That's how we'll approach it. It doesn't matter if you're the first on the depth chart or fifth. I mean, if you're in there, the expectation is to play at a high level. You're on the right channel. All right, fantastic. Thank you, brother. Yep. You just test, 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 test. So with the new rules this spring, we got three radios to put inside helmets from GSC. It's a company that does all the coach to player communication. They're a local company, but they got the contract for the Big Ten, ACC, all the big conferences. They're also the company that does uh, the NFL. We're getting to use it this spring to test it out. I mean, this staff is always looking at ways to improve, but even Coach Rule and some of the older guys on staff, they're not afraid of change and they're gonna innovate every day. About 
four different pieces. There's a radio inside the helmet that we've mounted. There's the speakers that are mounted in each helmet. And then we have a battery. And then you have the walkie talkie that the coaches talk through. Let's huddle this up, huddle this up. 11. That's it. Oh, fantastic. If it goes to three, I love the throw, but if it goes to three, a tight end's open too. I like the thought if you can get it. We're always on the cutting edge, so we got it as soon as we could. Us knowing GSC with them being a local company, you know, we've seen what they can do, had a good idea about it over the years. It's something that we were able to get it to quickly and get into our helmets and use right away. So it's been, it's been a really good relationship. We can't talk to the coaches, but the coaches can talk to us down to 15 seconds on the play clock. Having a headset like that will allow for better communication and more secure communication. Play with confidence. The other people around you feed off of your confidence and in your direction, right? Take control of it, lead it, and we'll be good. All right, let's go. Here we go. Bees on the queue. Q, Q bees. Len is coming in as the co-offensive coordinator. Sat's going to call the plays. It worked for us once before. We won a ton of games doing it. But, you know, this is Sat's going to stand up in front of the room and run the room. Hey, Sat and I have known each other for 20 plus years and we've got a great relationship and I have the utmost respect for him. He's a great football guy, he's got great uh, insight and then we just kind of hit the ground running. We think the same, we have the same expectations of quarterback play so it's been a, a, a very easy transition to this point. You know, my room's a great room, guys are working hard. One, two, hands, hands. It's cool to uh, to coach tight ends just because they do everything. Get a little bit of the run game, get a little bit of pass protection, get route running. Uh, you know, we've got a bunch of smart kids in there that work hard, so it's been a pleasure this, thus far. Especially when you have a guy like Fedoni and Warkature and then we have some really talented tight ends. I love when my play caller is over there because he understands more about the run game and, you know, we get the ball involved to more people. I want to get the tight ends involved, so just kind of the way I'm wired. Keep your player fast, whatever happens, happens. But here, we want to have our feet underneath us so I can catch it and tuck it. Got it. Got I am a extremely family-oriented person. I mean, love my family, love friends, dogs, animals. Um, kind of random, but it's kind of who I am. Like. I've always loved sports, football, and kind of that's what I grew up on. I think my dad has the clip of me in a whole Nebraska uniform. Like when I was like three, he popped me hard and my that Nebraska helmet came flying off. And I mean, that's just kind of how the love for the game started, I guess, really is like at a young age, my dad kind of, you know, really brought me up into football and my whole family, born and raised Nebraska fans. I mean, and I can remember, you know, like being a kid, like with the ball in my hand, doing like a play-by-play -play of like the games, you know, thinking I'm on the field. My relationship with Thomas is more than just a professional. Definitely have a personal, you know, connection to him. I mean, I've introduced Thomas to my family and my friends. He's a fantastic person, very easy to get along with. He's intense. He's a genuine person. He's a dude. How about that? I would explain him as he's a dude. Thomas, the moment is yours. Where will you be going to college? I remember when he came in, it was, you know, a big deal and he's a very good player and it was towards the end of the spring season getting ready for the game pretty routine route made a cut and felt a pop or whatever the symptoms are and initially on the field he was pretty guarded so we did an evaluation we got enough to be pretty worried about it I was doing well I mean I remember I think it was a day before there was an interview coach back Donnie obviously you know, he's got high praise coming out of high school but he's just a freshman done a tremendous job of taking to coaching. Came out and it was like Thomas is going to play for us this year. He's going to he's going to definitely be able to contribute to the team. And I was like, you know, as a freshman, that's that's what you want to hear. So I was like above the moon excited. You know, we just kind of told Thomas at that time, there's a little, you know, question mark regarding your ACL. Uh, I remember Thomas being pretty emotional. I'm an extremely strong-willed, strong-minded person, I, I would like to think anyway. And it was going to change the path a little bit, but it wasn't going to change, like, you know, the end goal of where I wanted to be. So work really hard, honestly, it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done is like, you know, the rehab for that was not easy. You know, not being with the team at all, ever. In the training room at like 5.30, 6, while everyone else is getting ready to go practice, and you're just sitting there and you're waiting for your time and opportunity to basically show that that injury or whatever didn't have anything to do with like your performance. It's always tough when you go through that with an individual, 
break that news to an individual. You know, for Thomas to go through something like that right off the bat, I think hit him hard because he questioned a lot of, you know, what did I do wrong? More so, what could I have done better? What didn't I do? And so as we went through the entirety of the rehab process, there was a lot of that like, hey, should I look at this exercise or what about this treatment modality or what about this supplement? Everyone's going to get a hand dealt, you know, they're going to get and give a situation and the people who make the best out of that situation are the ones who are going to make the best of the way things turn out. Today we were able to come to Lincoln Square Community Center. It was a great time. We got to hang out with some of the elderly in the community, hang out, sign autographs, take pictures, had too many cookies. It was a good time just hanging out with our community. Hanging out with these guys was fun. I enjoyed it. A big group of us, so they it seemed like they enjoyed it. So definitely we want to come back here again sometime. I've known Ramir a long time. He's been here a long time. Ramir has never been a training room guy. Rarely hurt. He's always taken care of himself. But uh, Ramir was on a kickoff return against Northern Illinois. Ramir's walking through the crowd and his shoulder's out and he just, I'm like, what's up Ramir? And he just, it's out, it's out, Drew, it's out. I think the story that embodies Ramir the most is whenever he ended up getting hurt, obviously something that requires surgery by the end of the year, he was like fighting to get back on the field. He was fighting with the trainers, like trying to get back on the field whatever way he could, even though he was in no shape to do so. Everything that he's done for us has just been fight, fight, fight. And it's always been this upward trajectory with him. So he's phenomenal. Everything was looking pretty good. Uh, Coach Rule made me a captain for the third game. My first home game here. It was also my first start of the season. So things were looking good. And then uh, everything just stopped for me because I got injured. So it was a devastating moment for myself because I never really experienced a uh, season ending injury. You know, I had like, you know, nicks and knacks and all that stuff, but nothing that we're just say like, you can't play again. So his season's cut short at that point. He ended up having surgery pretty quick right after. So that first part of the shoulder rehab, you're gonna be in a sling four to six weeks, and it's usually the part that they hate the most because all they wanna do is use their arm. From there, like once he gets out of the sling, we just slowly start to build on things, right? And like he approached his rehab like a pro. You know, at the end of the day, he came back for another year. In my eyes, it shows a lot about who he is as a person because he's like, no, like that's not how I wanna finish my career here at Nebraska. He wanted to be on the football field. He couldn't do that. So he looks at the situation, essentially evaluates and says, well, how can I make myself better in this, in this interim time? And so far, like since he has started to come back and become more and more full, he's bigger than he was before. He's stronger than he was before. He's faster than he was before. I would not say that's the norm, but that might just be Ramir Johnson's norm. I'm telling you, he's on this like mind intensity. He's strictly business. He's been strictly business since the day he got out of surgery. He was here the very next day. Most guys need, oh, I need a couple days to recover. Like he was ready to go the second he got out. I dealt with adversity, you know, before in my career, but this was like a different kind of adversity. But I felt like fate wanted this to happen for a bigger picture. It granted me, you know, my sixth year coming back to something special, I think it's gonna happen in 2024. I was back healthy after the surgery, after the rehab, after all that stuff, like after the eight months of rehab and a year, whatever it was, my leg was stronger than it was before. I was faster than it was before and I was heavier. So like I was feeling good all around. I was doing really well. Coaches were, you know, like noticing it, complimenting me on it. And then I took, uh, it was like a little shallow route, ball was thrown like a little behind me, you know, I had to go up and get it. And 
as I came down, my leg was straight enough and you know one of the DBs dove at basically right at my my knee and kind of took me out from there. That's where the story gets tough going into spring ball and it was almost the exact same day in spring season a year later that you know a fluke play that probably didn't need to happen. It was a tough scene. Yeah the second time man I was that that one second time got me I mean even now, it's like a emotional, like I can put myself back into, you know, where I was, where right. it happened. I couldn't even, couldn't breathe. I was crying so hard. I was crying, I couldn't breathe. I was puking on the sideline. The second time was a lot harder because I thought, you know, like, I dealt with my adversity. Like, you know, I was like, it was over. I wasn't have to do it anymore. And doing it again made it a lot worse, for sure. Once he went down, he knew it. He knew what the feeling was. He knew what the sensations were. When he retore that fix, then yeah, I mean, it was just, a, it was a horrible day all around. A part of me thought like, you know, these coach, the coaches are never gonna think that I'm gonna be who I was like before. I really had to dig into like my inner self, why I was doing it, like why I was playing, you know, like what was the whole reason? Like, is it worth it? People may not understand about the ACL rehab is it's, it's grueling. You have to get all of these qualities back that you used to have. You don't feel like that you're the same athlete, and it's a constant battle, both physically and psychologically. You know, for Fedoni to have the resilience to bounce back from not just one, but two, that says a lot about who he is as a person. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. You know, like two ACL tears and then to bounce back and him being able to run, jump, and do the things that he does at such a high level, it's like, it's extremely impressive. One thing I've taken a lot of pride in is like, making it so like the coaches and the new staff like, wouldn't know that I ever had any surgeries at all. Like, okay, he's a tight end, but he moves like that. Like, okay, he never had any surgeries until they get the medical report. Even like, you know, at the next level, I don't want scouts or, you know, anyone thinking anything different of me just because of two surgeries. I want to look better than anyone. <laughs> Thomas has grown more than anyone in our class that I've seen as a person, as a player, since we got here. I think he's transformed himself as a leader. Ish, get a split. Hey, boy. I think coming back from his two injuries, he had a chip on his shoulder. And I think last year, last season, that was something that he was out to prove. And now that he's gotten that out of the way, he's going to emerge even more. Everyone who's successful is gonna have people who don't believe in them. I wanna prove the people who believed in me right, the close ones, my dad, my naughty, my mom, my stepmom, my grandpa, I'm like all my cousins, like everyone. You can say someone's strong, like physically, but in this regard, I think that his mental strength really showed. You get cut short, not once, but twice. To me, it seems pretty natural to have some self-doubt, woe is me attitude, not with him. Every day he showed up just like he did the day before. Every day he had the attitude that who I was yesterday is not who I am today, it's not who I am tomorrow. Every day he really did strive to increase whatever it was, one pound more on leg extension or 10 pounds more on a squat or one mile per hour faster in the sprint. Obviously I want to be a winning football team. I want to win the championship. I want to go to the playoffs. I want to win it all. I want to be known as a great teammate, obviously, and a leader, and I want to be looked up to and someone who, like, you know, we can come back here in 10, 15 years and, you know, all the teammates to say how hard I worked, how good of a person I was, but I want to be known for the best tight end in the country and to be the best tight end to ever walk through doors. That's what I want to be known for. trying to grab we're trying to grab him with the Y so you put your foot in the ground at nine instead of running and kind of leading him like because you can open him up because I'm gonna take the middle
I definitely think that Ramir Johnson is one of those special guys that like, you'll never forget certain players, you know? He's quiet, but he is smart, <laughs> he's strong, he's extremely focused. I think he's focused on his goal. I don't think there's a thing that'll stop him because he's motivated, man. He is a motivated dude. Hi, Dad. I forgot. People who don't know me or people who see me, they kind of see I'm kind of quiet to myself, but like, I tend to always have like a flock around me. Whoever is around me, I try to spit gems that I learned throughout my time here, because being the older guy, I kind of experience everything for the most part. You know, I'm not the rah-rah guy, but I try to be the guy who like just pull somebody to the side and just, hey, let me tell you this, let me tell you that, show you this, show you that. There's always going to be somebody after you when you when your time is done, and you want to make sure they flourish just like how you want to flourish. There's nothing more important on a running back than having great eyes and being disciplined. Let's be true to our enemy points, let's be true to our reads. He's in pads, he's in a helmet, he's able to participate in anything contact driven. He's far enough out from his surgery, docs have cleared him. And that's just really for his case, like we're protecting him. Could he go do full everything? Most likely. From a physical standpoint, I think I'm pretty much close to 100%, not there, but close to it. Mentally, I'm I'm all the way there, I'm good. Here you go, here you go, here you go. Hey, pound back on three, one, two, three. I'm out there with my teammates doing some stuff, even though I'm limited, so, you know, I'm just looking forward to this year. I'm waiting to, uh, you know, hit the ground running. And when it's time to go back to work, you know, like, for real, for real, I'm gonna be ready. And I'm ready to chase this three with my teammates this 2024 season. Set, go. Pick the ball, pick the ball. I think he's kind of saw it as like last year, if he had a good year, maybe it would have been his last year. Now he's got another chance. I think that's going to benefit him too, because he's going to come back from this with a new attitude, a new intensity. I think now we're seeing a Ramir that's like truly on another level. I watch him now and it's just, I really wish we had a team full of him. Just because, I mean, he just kills things. You can't be the star running back here if you can't tote that back. That makes sense? And everyone's competing for the star spot, right? We got it, we got it, we got it. All right, okay. Hey, it's all love, right? Yes, this sir. is over. We get in the throne room, this is over. Back to us. We got it. It's all love, hey, yo. Pound the rock on three, one, two, three. Pound the rock. You know, 10, 15 years from now, I guess, I guess I just want people to know that I was hard working. I persevered through it all. No matter what was thrown at me, I still kept coming and conquering. So our scrimmages for the spring and our spring game will have the DB Sport Rewind technology here so our coaches can use it. We can test it in our stadium as well. Just make sure that everyone's comfortable going into the 2024 season. So getting that stuff in on Friday, we'll set up our cameras that'll be used to be attached to the Rewind system. So we'll have them set up. Pretty much it's just plugging them in, letting them go, having them on. DB Sport will then go through and make sure that they're able to see the feeds. We'll load their software onto about 14 of our iPads, get them set up, and just make sure that every device is able to see that video correctly. How this works, this is because SDI runs down through here, um, goes to this like converter that splits the signal. So the signal runs through fiber down to uh, West 6, we're on West 7, and then it goes to the replay booth. And then from that booth, it'll go to the coaches' booths and then to the field. So that's how the flow of, I guess, 
our cameras work. It's basically we've run fiber through our stadium. We have two termination points. We have one in our filming location on the sideline right here. We have another one in our south end zone box. So that'll go to the two cameras. They get the video feed. It's going to run down to the review box where they do like in-game review already. And then there'll be tablets in both coaches booths in our stadium. And then also there'll be a cart with a bunch of tablets on both sidelines. Coaches in the booth can watch uh, the video replay and then also coaches on the sideline can watch the video replay. It's something that we've been ready for. We've had the infrastructure for it. Coach Rule is really into new technology and trying to be at the forefront of everything like that. And he was he was ready for it, didn't take any convincing. We're just excited to be doing something brand new again and be at the forefront of technology. Feel free. I'll take that. One second, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna grab take this one. Man, let me see this here. Okay. Got motion, yep, Nicholas following him. Okay. Tiger T off yet? Uh, 1154. The last thing I'd say is you guys were here with these for three weekends. So unlike any of us, you guys are lit boss here. So you got three weekends to do this. And obviously we'll be around, so if you have any questions or on that, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. No one played bad and no one played good. The offense didn't play bad, the defense didn't play bad, the offense didn't play good, the defense didn't play good. Because as the guys out there with me were watching, sometimes it's a sack, but someone was uncovered, yes? And so all we're gonna do is go back and look and say where we're not doing our part, where we have to work at. And if you're getting corrected, and if his coach is saying, hey, that play was soft, or hey, you're not in shape and all that, understand in my eyes, that is love. That is us trying to help you become a good player. I'm looking at you and I'm saying, hey, when he's a senior, what can he be? I'm coaching you from the way out of here, not the way in here. Not right now, but two years, one year, four years from now. So look at the tape. Take the power of a pen and write down what you did well each play, what you did wrong each play, and then you look at it and you say, okay, I just need to fix X, Y, and Z. Then you have another week to fix it. Next week, next week, be back in here for a scrimmage. You should be a better player next week than you were this week, okay? But no one, no one did bad, no one did good. We just did what we did, and we'll do better next week. We'll do better the week after. One better every single day until eventually we'll always control. We're all on the same page? Yes, sir. Yeah. You gotta break it out. Here we go. <laughs> one better at three, one, two, three. One, one better. better.